Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And we are now going to have the very last presentation of the day, Cybercrime Trends in the Latin American and Caribbean region. This presentation will be done by our colleague at LACNIC, Graciela Martinez. Graciela Martinez, she's the head of the CSET at LACNIC, whose mission is to carry out the functions of coordination and to strengthen the capacities of CSETs across Latin America and the Caribbean. Graciela also takes charge of Amparo workshops. These are the workshops that are aimed at developing capacities and, and putting in place CSIRTs across the region. Graciela is a computational analyst and she possesses a diploma in telecommunications and networks. She has more than 20 years experience in IT, in project management, and in different areas of security. She has worked for more than 15 years on the area of information security in training and activities that also deal with uh, the, uh, with, uh, the, the findings of, of security research. Without further ado, I extend the floor to you, Graciela, to lead us through this last presentation of today. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I'm going to start my presentation. Good morning or good afternoon for everybody. Um, thank you for attending this meeting. Um, okay. We're going to talk uh, a bit about cybercrime trend, trends uh, within, our la within our region. Um, as uh, Kevin mentioned before, uh, LACNIC CSERT is the Computer Security Incident Response Team, and our constituency are LACNIC members, and we have a coordination role. This is very important because we we have, we have to bear in mind that we are not the internet police and that we uh, don't have any authority on the operations of any organization. What we can do is just ask and recommend and sometimes we have to uh, do some advice brokering between different parties, but that's uh, uh, all that we can do. And now, um, before going on, I would like to tell you some a few comments. Uh, maybe you are uh, thinking why uh, reporting to LACNIC CSERT. Uh, you know that many people, when are facing security problems on the internet, they don't know where to go or to who to report a security problem. So um they start looking for different contacts and and you have to understand that LACNIC is like a like a hub that we concentrate uh, the who is information about the the ips and the organizations so um, many times they address the report to us and also another thing that uh, we can see is that some people don't uh, don't know the difference between uh, not a domain or, a, or an IP, but maybe they confused and they think that the same organization that uh, handles or, or manages the <coughs> sorry the domains is the same as the one that uh, manages um, the IPs. So we have to explain sometimes um, how to to get the right information. But some, sometimes we have to face uh, some problems because um, sometimes it's very hard to, to get the right contact to, to make those reports or to send to those reports. Sometimes we have to escalate and, and we struggle uh, where to report because uh, some contacts are not available or are not responding our our um, communications. And also the GDPR uh, uh, had affected a lot the GD the who is services because they can't um, publish certain information. So the the abuse contact sometimes is uh, not non-responsive or it is an automatic uh, email. And 
but uh, luckily we have other security teams that uh, they are always uh, helping us so we can manage to uh, do the advice brokering that that uh, i mentioned before so now i would like you to show i would like to show to you some uh, different types of incidents uh, that are reported to us from other organizations. The, uh, it's an important thing to bear in mind that um, in these statistics uh, are involved uh, our resources or the resources within our region. And as you can see, the, the phishing and the malware are, uh, are at the top of the hill. And this is why, uh, this is because um, some resources that are uh, uh, within our region are hosting phishing, are hosting malware, and maybe they don't know that they are hosting those uh, malicious sites or those malicious malware, but <laughs> we have to uh, let them know and advise them that they have to, they would be great if they remove uh, those uh, malicious um, content, okay? And also, uh, we would like to show and to share with you this chart that shows the historical percentage, as it says uh, on the chart, of the type of incidents that we managed since the beginning, since uh, the beginning of our um, actions. And the phishing is again at the top of the hill. So we have a lot of problems within the region, but um, we know that together we can improve the security uh, on the internet. And also, uh, we can see some botnets affecting our region. And for example, the configure is the 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 most. Um, it has the the the, the bigger part of, of the cake, and this is. Mm, a bit sad because if we think about configure, configure is a malware that affects um, the Windows operating system, and it is um, a, it it's, uh, has been on on the internet on uh, or living between us since two thousand and eight. So it this uh, means that. Um, a lot of people don't update their systems. So uh, we as administrators or as, as security advisors, we should uh, let them know that uh, when they are connected to the internet, they must have their systems up to date. And for example, this is um, um, a chart that shows that uh, a spam originated in Belize. You, you can see that there are not, uh, so this is how many um, uh, different resources uh, were involved with originating spam. And luckily we have seen that uh, it has been diminishing all along the, the this period that we are showing. Okay, now I'm going to uh, talk about the HoneyNet. We at LACNIC uh, CISER, we have a HoneyNet. A HoneyNet uh, is a network of honeypots. And a honeypot is like an IT system that sim simulates to be a, a vulnerable system. And so the attackers uh, will start attacking the, that honeypot. And um, you have the opportunity to collect information in order to analyze the information. And also uh, you can um, prevent uh, certain actions, okay? So the benefits of, of having a, 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 honey, a honeypot within your network that belongs to a honey net uh, is that you will uh, be able to um, see to you will be able to access to a dashboard and there uh, you will be able to detect and stop attacks because maybe uh, you see certain behaviors of your attackers uh, within your, your honeypot and you will be able to look uh, for those uh, behaviors uh, within the logs 
of your uh, own networks, okay? And for example, you can collect malware and you can analyze that malware, how, how the behavior and, and the ways that uh, uh, it attacks or it reacts to certain actions of certain uh, users. Um, also, you can detect uh, compromised systems and you can uh, give that feed to, to some systems for uh, indicators of compromise and you deflect uh, the attention of the real systems because uh, while the attacker is um, doing something uh, in your honeypot, it, it, uh, he is not, he or she is not attacking the real ones. And the distribution of uh, these sensors is, uh, we have 19 sensors now, now, and they are distributed all, all around these uh, countries. So if you would like to join us, you can drop us an email to the CSERT at uh, LACNIC.net. And I would like to, to, um, to uh, give you some examples of a uh, certain information that you can get from the HoneyNet dashboard. Uh, when you have a honeypot, you will get a user. So you, you will see your own, uh, the information of your own network. And then you can, you will be able to see the, the whole picture of, of the network, but uh, you are not going to be able to uh, distinguish between your, um, between the different uh, uh, honeypots that belongs to other networks that uh, that you are that are not yours, um, the attacks uh, from Belize, for example, you can see that there was uh, there was a peak in in February, and then it was another peak uh, in in May but you can select uh, a lot of information that uh, so you will be able to, to to take actions as well within your network maybe you decide to uh, to uh, analyze your traffic and look for certain um, uh, uh, topics another uh, example of the honeynet dashboard for example the most common passwords that uh, attackers uh, used uh, or have used uh, when when they attacked uh, some honeypots uh, within the, the the network there was for example an NA proc and one two three four five six and not only the users um, that is because the the most of the users use this this type of password. The word password is uh, is itself uh, another uh, common password. So we have to avoid to use those passwords. Uh, but we have to help our users to understand the the importance of the security of the information and the importance uh, importance to set um, good passwords. Okay. So um, it is a good thing to, to bring security awareness campaigns for, for the staff within your organizations. For example, it is a good idea to, to tell them or to show them that different contexts, uh, seasons, natural disasters, sports, there are a lot of things that are used for, for the attackers to, to um, develop uh, certain campaigns and they go and attack uh, certain uh, uh, objectives. And then there are uh, a lot of contributing factors uh, for, the for the success of, of, of these attacks. Uh, some users are worried, uh, other users are, um, are struggling with a, with a lot of work. Sometimes they are alone and all these uh, factors contribute to, to, to to, to the uh, successful of, of these uh, campaigns. You have to help your staff with different tips and different advice about security information and let them know that the information is an asset that they have to protect it uh, in, the, in their principle of the confidentiality, integrity and availability. And for example, certain outcomes 
of the of a security awareness campaign, you will see that the staff is more aware of different security uh, scams or frauds because uh, they are going to report you more, more, uh, more things, and you will be able to uh, advise or warn or or send early warnings to, to the rest of the staff in order to prevent from um, certain attacks. And you will see, uh, you can see uh, that uh, users uh, learn uh, how uh, to protect themselves and they are not, uh, they are not going to click on a malicious site uh, as uh, they used to, to do it uh, before a security campaign and you will pre prevent also certain uh, data breaches. So have you been a victim of a cyber crime? Don't be shy, you have to report it. If you don't uh, have, if you don't know where to report it uh, on our website, you, you can find a list of uh, um, our regional uh, CSERTs. Uh, you can find them um, by, by country. And also um, on our website, we provide a web form that you can uh, fill that form and that uh, form, uh, we will uh, read that form and we, we will help you. But um, we encourage uh, you to, or you have to encourage your staff as well to um, report to the IT if they don't, if you don't have a security team within your organization, they have to report the problems to the IT team. So the IT team uh, will be able uh, to understand the problem and take uh, proper actions. If, if the IT team don't know what is going on, it's uh, a bit difficult for the IT team to take proper actions. And um, as a summary, I would like to tell you that, okay, plan the regular security awareness, but not only for your staff, only for your constituency or your clients. Uh, it is a good thing. For example, banks are doing well, well, are doing a, a lot of campaigns about uh, phishing and about uh, protecting passwords and not sharing passwords between different systems because um, the, the attackers uh, may be able to do to attack, uh, do uh, lateral attacks and of move uh, uh, lateral uh, uh, to other systems. Um, you should use checklists uh, when, when you are developing systems or when you are um, implementing or connecting new devices or services, uh, you're plugging those devices into your network, you should uh, follow a checklist in order to avoid uh, forgetting certain things, certain important things. For example, um, we have a, a project about uh, open DNS resolvers. Um, that is a clear example. You have to um, configure those, um, the configurations of those um, servers. Uh, um, must be must be done in a certain with certain steps, and they uh, want they shouldn't be able to um, respond to query that are not that don't, don't belong to their own network. Okay, and um, for example, uh, when you have to to write down or implement certain rules, uh, select the most restrictive rules. That is, you have to close all the ports and start opening only the ones that you are going to use and deny uh, everything by default. And then you can start to open uh, traffic that only for, for the systems that you know that, uh, that you have allowed uh, within your networks. <laughs> and update systems uh, systematically if you if you can use feeds that they they will uh, tell you uh, which ones are the security issues that uh, are uh, more urgent and so you will analyze those uh, feeds and you will be able to to take actions and update the systems as they suggest uh, on those advices. And you have to encourage as well to implement the best practices 
uh, there are a lot of best practices and for example this is just an example for the acquisition of the customer premise equipment you know that these cpes um, are used to attack other uh, infrastructures so you can go and, and uh, read the source uh, you can find you will find the, the VCOP, uh, the PDF on this uh, source. Um, for example, um, uh, it is a good uh, idea that uh, you, you can find out on the internet a lot of best practices if you, if you don't know um, if there exists uh, or not, but you should be able to, to or to ask in in a in in a in search a list, for example, uh, at Latin we have a lot of uh, email lists that you can um, join and ask for information and help, and work with security information as I've mentioned previously. And finally, uh, how to improve internet security? It's it's uh, it, it's it's easy because we have to think that we can't do anything alone. We, we need to share information. We need to collaborate uh, within uh, our region and with other parties and with other organizations. We have to build in uh, relationships. You know that the trust, the, uh, the trustworthy between um, building trustworthy relationships between the different teams is uh, crucial to improve uh, security and uh, you have to take care of uh, your systems and you have to take care of what you host uh, on your systems and the problems that you may have uh, in your network. There are a lot of things that you can uh, consider and, and also the LACNIC CISER statistics, uh, they, they provide you a tool in order to understand what is going on within the region, so you will be able to take actions uh, according to them. So now I'm sorry if I run a bit. <laughs> and you can drop us an email to CSERT uh, at LACNIC.net. Uh, we have a Twitter and our website is uh, this one. So thank you. Um, um, now. <laughs> here if you have any questions thank you very much graciela that was a very comprehensive review of the cybercrime trends here in latin america and the caribbean and the work of lacnic csert at this point in time i'm going to invite our colleague guillermo Pereira, who will lead us through the q a of course if you have any questions feel free to drop them now in the q a box uh, this is the time to ask those questions so Guillermo, over to you. Hello, hello everyone. Um, we don't have any question yet. Uh, if you can have any question, please write them below in the Q&A box. Okay. We don't have any questions. Uh, Guillermo, you can go ahead. Net, and we are going to get in touch with you as up. So, Kevin. Uh, Kevin, we don't have any questions. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Guillermo, and thank you, Graciela. That was a wonderful presentation. Just as a reminder, this, all of these sessions are being recorded and will be published in the coming days at a link that will be placed in the chat. So have no fear, you will have the recording of these sessions in a link that will be placed in the chat very shortly. As we come to the end of this first day of activities, LACNIC on the Move Belize, I'd like to thank all of you for being here with us for engaging with us on these very interesting topics that we hope will serve to strengthen the capacities of the technical community there in Belize as you continue to work on your internet development in that country. Tomorrow, we will start at the same time 
with a workshop that will be conducted by our colleagues Carlos Martinez and Mr. Nicolas Antoniello from ICANN. And this workshop will be on the topics of DNS security. So be sure to register or to continue to send the information to your colleagues who may want to attend that session. And we will start promptly tomorrow morning on DNS security workshop. That session will begin at 9 a.m. Belizean time. Without further ado, I'd like to thank you once again and wish all of you a great rest of your day. Goodbye.